I would like to find out more, if possible, about awareness's relationship with thoughts. The awareness's relationship with thought. Awareness's relationship, yeah. Um, it seems that when awareness has an object like thought, it takes this recognition that awareness has experienced the thought only afterwards. Whereas with um, perceptions or with the feelings, it seems to me to be much more easier to observe and stand as awareness. So I was just wondering if you can bring more clarity to that. But during the thought itself, awareness always stands one with the thought, or that's true of any object. It's only, as you rightly say, after the fact that we separate out the two and we speak of awareness plus objects. Or another way of saying the same thing is it, it, during the experience of a thought, awareness is one with the thought as its knower, but not just its knower, it is not a distant knower, it, it is it, its knower and at the same time it is the stuff the thought is made of. So the, the The analogy would be a, a, a screen. Imagine there were, a screen could watch the movie that is playing on it. The screen is both one with the movie and knows the movie. But the, new, the movie is not something other than itself. It is the activity of itself. So thought is, or rather, the experience of thinking is the activity of awareness. When a thought occurs, it seems sometimes to veil awareness. Although I, awareness, experience the thought, I'm the knower of the thought, but sometimes it seems that the thought clouds awareness. And yes. of course, when it arises as I. Yes, the thought seems to veil awareness only as long as the thought seems to be something other than awareness. In just the same way that a, a, a movie seems to veil the screen, as long as the image in the movie seems to be something other than the screen. In other words, if you think that the image in the movie is a real landscape, then by definition you will seem to no longer see the screen, you will see the landscape. But as soon as you realize that the landscape is the activity of the screen, then the image in the movie ceases to veil the screen but shines with it. So as long as you think that th a thought is something other than awareness, then the arising of a thought will seem to veil awareness. As long as you, as, but as soon as you realize that all there is to think, to a thought is thinking, and all there is to thinking is the knowing or the awareness of it, then you realize that the thought is not an object distinct from awareness, but is the very activity of awareness itself. Just as the movie is the, could be said to be the activity of the screen. So the thought can either veil awareness or reveal awareness, depending on the way you look at it. Does the landscape in the movie veil the screen, or does it shine with the screen? Depends how you see it. In other, word, in other words, the world is not what we see, it is the way we see. Sometimes, out of all objects, thought seems the much more difficult to realize 
that is awareness itself, just like all other objects. Because in my experience, I can easily stand as awareness with sounds, uh, so with uh, bodily sensations, with feelings and perceptions. But when it comes to thought, it takes an afterthought to realize, oh, yes, I, that was a thought. Okay, so think now. Just allow yourself, as we're talking, to have a, a, a stream of thoughts. doesn't matter what their content. And a, as you're experiencing thoughts, is it clear to you that all there is to those thoughts is the experience of thinking? All you're experiencing is thinking. There is nothing to a thought other than thinking. Yes? Do you, mean, do you mean that? I mean you, it, yes. Is it clear to you? Okay, so now keep thinking. And Is it clear to you as you're thinking that all there is to the experience of thinking is the knowing of it? If you, in other words, if you touch the stuff that thinking is made of, all you find is knowing. It's hard to tell right now because now I am aware of being aware. <laughs> And <laughs> okay, but if it's not completely clear to you, tell us what is there to thinking other than knowing? What other substance in your experience is present in thinking other than knowing? There's just knowing, but I can stand as the knowing and realize that there's just knowing. In other words, I, I am only the knowing. And sometimes it just happens. And I realize only after that I've experienced a thought. Okay, so you, for a while, you only realize this as an, as an afterthought, after the fact. So that's fine. Now realize it during the fact. That makes me think um, that I have to train to stand as awareness. No, it seems that you have to do so. <laughs> and if it seems that you have to do so, then, then do so. What it is, in fact, is that you have been trained by your culture to stand as something other than awareness. But you have been practicing for standing as something other than awareness or knowing something other than awareness for so long you no longer realize you're practicing it. It is your default. And therefore you think you have to practice standing as awareness. You don't have to practice standing as awareness. It is your natural condition. So to be aware, yes, it's my natural condition. But to be aware of being aware, it to me is something different. By default, I'm aware. But, but by default, Awareness is self-aware. The sun doesn't have to practice illuminating itself. Its nature is self-illumination. Awareness is the same. It knows itself effortlessly. You don't have to practice that. You just seem to be aware of something other than awareness because you have convinced yourself that there is a world out there made out of objects and feelings and perceptions and thoughts and so you think you're experiencing something other than awareness. Therefore, you think that you, awareness, are no longer aware of yourself, awareness. You think, I am aware of the world. <coughs> you're not aware of the world. All you're aware of is a perception. And all there is to perception is the knowing of it. In other words, all you're experiencing now is knowing. But your culture has persuaded you to think that you are knowing something other than knowing, called an outside world. That's why Rumi said, knowledge of the world is a kind of ignorance. In order to know something called a world made out of matter, you have to ignore the reality of experience, pure consciousness. But if you have become so accustomed to knowing something other than awareness, that is, a world made out of matter, then make the effort to practice knowing, only knowing in all your experience until it becomes your new default. Hmm? 
in other words, until experience loses its capacity to veil consciousness. Until the image in the movie loses its capacity to veil the screen. The only reason it seems to veil the screen is because you give it permission to do so. So, for example, in deep meditation, where there are no objects... I don't recommend deep meditation. But you know what I mean. <laughs> no, not the time... I mean, unless you call this experience deep meditation, in which case, yeah, if... if what I mean let's call this deep meditation, which is, which is experiencing intimately your current experience. That's deep meditation. Fully experiencing your current experience. That's what deep meditation is, yeah? So this is deep meditation, yeah? Yes. Now, when you fully experience this current experience, what do you find? What do you, what do you know? The knowing of it. Perfect. Now just keep going back to that experience or keep reminding yourself experientially of this experience until it becomes your new default. And when it becomes your new default, experience will have lost its capacity to veil its reality. What's the problem? I can see you're not happy. <laughs> it's just because I have the feeling that um, in a sense, maybe I'm not expressing myself properly, and um, for me to stand as awareness is just being aware of whatever comes into the field of experience. So, no disciplining of the attention. But there's a difference. For example, I can eat a meal and think about something else, and by the time I finish the meal, I, I wouldn't even realize that I finish, finished it. So that's one, one way of relating to experience. And uh, another way is to um, be aware of while eating the meal, um, noticing textures, um, smells, tastes. It's a completely different experience to me. What is there to choose? But it's true, it's a different experience. But what is there to choose between the two experiences? Because in I mean, what, what, what's wrong with thinking or talking when you're eating a meal? This is not mindfulness. I mean, some meals, like the meals we have here, it's nice to give your attention to the, to the taste, but other meals... <laughs> I'd rather be thinking. <laughs> in, in the latter case, it seems to me that Awareness shines brightly rather than being in the background. It's true that if our attention is, is if, if our attention is lost in the experience, either because we like it so much, either because it is so pleasurable or because we dislike it so much, because it is so uncomfortable. That uh, attachment or repulsion of the experience will tend to bring the experience out into the foreground and will relegate awareness to the background. Mm -hmm. It is not the object itself that comes out into the foreground, it is our attachment or repulsion or attachment to it or repulsion for it that seems to make it stand out in sharp relief from the background of awareness. It seems to relegate awareness to the background. But as long as we, but as soon as we go back to the experience without any uh, preference for or against, the, the foreground of the objects merges with the background of awareness and awareness shines. 
fact, awareness was always shining, but it seemed to be veiled by the exclusive focus of our attention, positive or negative, on the object. It's like when you're watching a movie, if, if, you're, if what you're watching is so pleasurable or terrifying, you get very involved with the movie and you seem to cease seeing the screen mm -hmm. at that moment, or at best the screen seems to go into the background. But as soon as the movie no longer interests you particularly, let's say there's a boring section in the movie, you sit back in your chair, your attention relaxes, whatever is happening on the screen, the image on the screen tends to fade into the background and suddenly the screen seems to come into the foreground. The screen doesn't actually come into the foreground. It was always there. It was previously relegated into the background by the exclusive focus of your attention mm -hmm. on the content of the movie. As soon as that exclusive focus relaxes, the screen mm -hmm. seems to emerge. It shines. Well, awareness is like that. Mm -hmm. It is our, it has our uh, attraction or repulsion, our seeking or resistance for experience that seems to relegate awareness into the background of experience. There are other times when it is necessary for the object to come into the foreground of experience and it is neither the result of attraction or repulsion. If you're performing a an action that requires all of your attention, if you're a surgeon or a musician, or, then, then that's another reason why awareness would go into the background. And then as soon as the focus of your attention softens, uh, uh, awareness will emerge into the foreground again. That's perfectly legitimate. Mm -hmm. I can see you're still not completely happy. <laughs> because um, I think that when I give attention to being aware, then there's this peacefulness and um, clarity. Um, but when that seems to be merged with objects, it overlooks that peacefulness and clarity. You see, at the moment, there is this distinction in your experience. It, it's either awareness, which you experience as peace and clarity, or the object. So you're, you're going back and forth between the two. That's okay to begin with. But at some stage, you have to collapse the distinction. So you're, you, what you're saying is, when I'm watching a movie, I can either see the landscape or the screen, but I can't see both at the same time. You're oscillating between seeing the landscape in the movie or the screen in the background. You're going back and forth. That's fine to begin with, but at some stage, you have to s learn to see the landscape without losing sight of the screen. In fact, Whenever you're seeing the landscape, you are only seeing the screen, but you don't realize it. So that's what we were doing this morning, trying to merge the distinction, the apparent distinction between awareness and its objects. There isn't such a thing as a thought and the knower of the thought. There is just the experience of thinking, and the only substance present in thinking is consciousness or knowing. And then there is no longer necessary to move away from the object or turn away from the object because the object is shining with its reality. It no longer veils its reality. You no longer have to turn the movie off in order to see the screen because the movie is shining with the screen. And at that stage, you might be eating a meal, uh, just tasting the meal, that's fine. On another occasion you might be eating the meal, talking with a friend or thinking, that's also fine. All there is to the eating, the talking, the thinking, the hearing, is knowing. Experience is no longer problematic, it has lost its power to veil its reality. And instead shines with it. <laughs> 